Hey there, Eric Gall here from Empowering Ability. And I have a question for you today. What was your childhood dream? It could have been a doctor, a teacher, a professional sports player, whatever it was for you, I want you to think about that. Great, now you've got that image in your mind of what your childhood dream was, but no one has ever had a childhood dream of going to a day program every day. And doing activities in a pretend environment amongst other people with developmental disabilities that are being othered and separated from the rest of society. No one has had that as a childhood dream. So this is the dominant option, the most prevalent option that's presented to families that have a loved one with a develop developmental disability, often the only option. And is that right? When we put it in the context of you know, our own childhood dreams and what we think about what would be possible for our lives, why don't we do that sort of thinking for our loved one with a developmental disability as well? Use that awesome ordinary life lens to expand the possibilities of what could be possible for our loved one instead of just thinking about, well, you know, all they have a disability, a day program is the only option for them after high school. So I wanna help you expand those possibilities beyond a day program. And I wanna share why a day program is not best for people with developmental disabilities, no matter how that day program is being marketed, okay? Now, before I get into that, I just wanna preface the rest of this video is, I have no judgment on a family or on you if your loved one is currently going to a day program, right? Day programs are marketed uh, to, to families that have a loan with developmental disability as kind of the only option at many, uh, many times, okay? But what I want you, if your loved one is in a day program, I want you to start thinking about how can we take a little bit of the resources and, and time from, from that day program and investing those, in, investing that time and that money into what would be better? Okay, so we're gonna talk about that. I'll talk about that in a, in a minute here, a little bit later in this video. So let's talk about what the problem is with day programs. So the first thing is, is that day programs separate people with developmental disabilities from the rest of society and group them together in a place in a pretend environment, right? So often day programs are marketing inclusion, they're marketing learning life skills, they're giving an illusion that our loved one will make friends. And none of this is true. None of it is true. Let me go through each one. Inclusion. How can you have inclusion in a place where it's designed just for people with developmental disabilities and they're being grouped together? right? That is by nature separating people from the ordinary places doing ordinary things in our communities. Okay. So you can't have inclusion when people with disabilities are grouped together. Even if we're grouping two or three people with developmental disabilities together, it becomes very hard for those people to interact with other people in ordinary community places. Let's talk about life skills. Can you actually learn life skills in a day program? Well, first off, it's a pretend environment. Let's take an example of something like cooking. You know, even if you're cooking a legit meal at in that day program and somebody's guiding you to do that, you're probably not getting one-on-one -on -one support to do it. The other main challenge here is that, is that going to be transferable because where we need to be learning life skills is where we're actually going to be doing the life skill. So in our home, right? So it could be, you know, making lunch. Well, we need to look at what are our family dynamics first, because if we're not getting the opportunity or the right level of support and encouragement to make our own lunch in our own home, where it's never going to happen. So often what I'm seeing is, you know, what's being learned in those pretend environments in a day program is not translating into building cap actual capability in a person's life because where that needs to be learned is at home with one-on-one -on -one support. So we need those real situations to actually learn, okay? And then friendships, right? This, this idea that, okay, we're gonna, your loved one's gonna make friendships at the day program. 
it doesn't happen. Why doesn't it happen? Because again, people with disabilities are being grouped together and often those people haven't had the opportunity to interact with other people that have strong social skills. And we learned, we learn social skills, we learn how to make friends, friends and be in relationship with people through people who are good, have good social skills, because then we can mirror those social skills, right? And when that other person has good social skills, it helps us to enter into relationship with them. So we're grouping together people that are all trying to learn social skills, they're trying to develop their own social skills. So what happens? Most often, people with disabilities are drawn to the staff that work there, who are neurotypical, and try and build relationships with them. And that's a whole other problem because if those staff are acting as friends and aren't actually friends, um, then that's very misleading and it can actually be very harmful and cause trauma towards a person with a disability because somebody is acting like their friend and isn't actually their friend. So there's a whole bunch of stuff there. I'll create another video on maybe paid supporters acting like friends in another video. But I just wanna help you understand that day programs are not gonna be delivering what they promise. And it actually excludes your loved one from community, from real opportunity, from pursuing their actual interests, right? Pursuing those childhood dreams, right? Because no one has a childhood dream of going to a day program. So what's better? What's better? Better is actually pursuing childhood dreams. It, what does that mean? In, in kind of more ordinary terms. It means exploring your interests in ordinary places. It means maybe exploring what could paid work look like, right? In an ordinary place. And to do these sorts of things, to explore your interests in ordinary places, to explore paid work, that often requires one-on-one -on -one support, okay? Um, and, in, and that support, um, helping that person to explore their interests, helping that person to get that paid work. So if you're interested in exploring more on what's better and sh or maybe shifting some resources into what would be better, if your loved one is going to a day program, I'm not saying stop the day program entirely, right? I never recommend pulling the rug out from someone's routine, from someone's life, but how can you over time shift some of those resources into the ordinary, into investing uh, in your loved one's interests in ordinary places, into investing into paid work? So. If you're interested in learning more about that, I've got a free upcoming workshop. I've got the link below here, this video. Um, so you can go ahead and click on that link and register. It's completely free. I also invite you to leave a comment below in the comment section. And I'm Eric Gall. Together, let's take a small step forward this week.